K2 Designer will give us more flexibility to customize and return the properties we want from the getWeather method in our smart object. Because the getWeather method returns weather data in serialized JSON format, it is initially harder to get to the weather properties from that method alone. We want to make this easy for our form designers to get to this data in one method call, so we can use method chaining to extract weather values out of the serialized data and expose the properties we want like the current high and low temperatures and things like humidity. In this lesson, I have already created an empty advanced smart object named weather to speed things up and allow us to chain methods together. My requirement is to be able to call getWeather from a smart form and display some current weather conditions on the form based on an entered location. I'm actually going to get properties for this smart object from the service object methods we call rather than manually add them. To do this, I'll open the methods tab, then click on the add button, go into the open weather map service object, and to get to the method we want, we can drill down into the object types folder, then go down into the weather type and select the get weather method. Then I'll click the next button. For name, I'll change this value to get current weather. We can leave it set to the read type and leave the transaction type as continue. Nothing else is needed on this window, so we can move on. Mapping input parameters and return properties is next. To make this easy, I'm just going to select create all and have K2 create all the parameters for me and automatically bind them. Then as an example, I need to go down into the return property section and clear a few of these properties since I'm not concerned with exposing them at this point. That should do it. Upon reviewing what I just did, we can see that the parameters and return properties are automatically set up for us to call getWeather. If we publish the smart object at this point, when we call getWeather, we will get serialized JSON objects back in each of these return properties. We need to make this a little more meaningful for our form designers at this point. This is where method chaining comes into play, and I'll click next to get this going. For demonstration purposes, I just want something like current weather description with an icon and maybe current temperature on a smart form. To get to these values, I know that they live in the main and weather return properties. So I need to run each of those values through their respective deserialized methods to get those properties out. Let's begin with the weather property. I'll add another method. Then from the service object method box, we can click on the ellipses option to open the service objects list again. I'll go down into the weather object type in the open weather map service object. Here I need to select the deserialize typed array method, which will also give me the ability to create the specific return properties I want. From here I'll click create all to create each property automatically for now. The serialized array input property for this method does need to be changed and assigned to the weather array property that comes out of the getWeather method we just configured. So let's set that up by selecting this property for input, then click on the assign button, and for smart object property I'll select weather. I only want description and icon, so I'm going to clear the ID and main bindings because I'm not going to use those values in my form. This is where the deserialized values for description and icon will land when this method is called. By doing this, they can be dropped into smart forms and workflows much easier. I'll click OK now to go back and add another method. I want to do the same thing for the main return property from getWeather, so we can get to the temperature and humidity values. This JSON object is not an array, but it is still serialized so we can just call the deserialize method under the main service object. I'll click the add button to add another method, drill down into the main service object type under open weather map, and select deserialize. Moving on from here, I'll select create all, but then change the serialized item input binding to the main property, And that should do it. I'll keep the rest of these return properties and finish this dialog out. 
Let's take a look at the results of this step. As we built this chained method, the actions we took created the smart object properties for us, as you can see over on the properties tab. When we call get current weather from a smart form, these properties will be populated according to the order in which the chained methods run. To lay it out, the serialized return properties of the direct call to open weather map, like wind, weather, and base, are populated. Then we push those values through the deserialize methods, which populate properties such as temp, pressure, and humidity. I'll finish this out and save it back to K2. This is the process you'll take when working with serialized JSON objects. The nice thing is, now we only have to call one method to pull in data from the REST endpoint, and it deserializes it into the values we need for our application.